Hi guys, this is Wave618. It's the 7th of April 2018 and it's currently 10.44 in the morning BST. Alright, so we're just looking at Bitcoin here on the 4 hourly chart. Um, and in this video what you can expect is we're going to discuss um, <clears throat> where we can expect price to come down to. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, I was looking at this 3000 level where there's excellent horizontal support. <clears throat> um, if you look at this level here, excellent support here, excellent resistance here, and I think that may be a good target for where we can expect Bitcoin price to go. Um, before we go into this, just like to mention a few things. So, um, yeah, first of all, uh, the channel is growing really nicely, almost at 1,000 subscribers now, very close to that figure. Um, so, a massive thank you to you all. The channel is only approximately five or six weeks old, um, so it's grown pretty well. I'm very happy with that and um, very grateful for the support. Um, I uploaded recently some tutorial videos on Elliott Wave. Um, I wanted to really show you how I use my Elliott Wave because that is probably the hardest aspect of my technical analysis to learn. All the other indicators, for example, candlesticks, volume, um, MACD, RSI, these things can all be learned very, learnt very quickly. Whilst Elliott Wave is something that takes a lot of time to learn, there's a lot of textbooks to read, and um, even after reading the textbooks, uh, you have to really apply it to learn how Elliott Wave is applied. Um, so it takes a lot of screen time to learn Elliott Wave. Um, but yeah, I felt that those videos will break down essentially what the textbooks tell you. The only thing it admitted really was the Fibonacci uh price projections that we commonly use with different waves but that will require a new tutorial on Fibonacci just to explain that further. Alright guys but we'll stick to what we can expect from Bitcoin price in this video now. Alright so the reason I was expecting Bitcoin to come down a lot lower is because whenever Bitcoin has made five big waves up it's always retraced at least 78.6% uh, of the way down which is a significant fib level if we just zoom in or zoom out rather on the daily chart we can just plot that 78.6 fib so it the 78.6 level is around 4300 as you can see 4300 i'm expecting to this as a minimum target for bitcoin to reach 4300 um, reason being i've explained it in previous videos it's always retraced at least that amount as a bare minimum after these five um, five waves up. A lot of people have been saying, oh, it's different this time. Bitcoin has um, is more uh, popular now, so it's not going to do the same as it did before. But my response to people who think that way is, the, is that Bitcoin, yes, people know about it. But the fact that people know about it does not mean it's more valuable. Yeah. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's fundamentals have remained the same since it was created and it's, it's, it's been designed to act as a means of transaction that can be well trusted and it's still very much in its pilot phase. Companies are using Bitcoin right now but it's only a handful of companies that are using it. Um, it's still in the pilot phase. What we need to see is we need those companies to be audited and we need to see the results of those audits which demonstrate that companies using Bitcoin have been more successful than companies that don't use Bitcoin in, the, in terms of um, success with transactions. Yeah, we need that data. When that data comes out, then Bitcoin will have some intrinsic value. You'll find that other companies start adopting the use of Bitcoin <clears throat> or blockchain technology in general. Then you'll be able to say, that Bitcoin shouldn't be having these large retracements. But until that day comes, I'm still very much of the opinion that Bitcoin will retrace very deeply, at least to the 78.6 retracement, as it has done um, previously on the last four occasions since 2010, when it's made five major waves up. Um, sorry, last, last three occasions, I think it was. Um, so yeah, that, that's my target. I expect it to at least come down to 4,300, but I see it coming, potentially testing this 3,000 level. So 
let's break down what's been happening. A lot of people have been confused. It's been coming down slowly, not sharply, and people are wondering what's going to happen next. People are still bullish, thinking this was the bottom here. Um, so let me try and break this down for you. I have been looking at it over the last few days, and I apologize. It's been a while since my last video. I've been a little bit unwell, so that's why um, I've not posted a video for a while. But um, Okay, so let's have a look. So I was explaining this was going to come down in a large WXY, so this being WXY. A WXY pattern is essentially two corrective patterns joined by an X wave. So the first corrective pattern was an ABC. That was wave W. X was the joining wave. And then Y was going to be a new corrective pattern. Now I'm going to zoom in here and explain why we might actually have to change this to a WXY x z yeah but i'll explain that as we break down the wave count a, a bit closer so i want to have a look on the hourly chart now and we're going to be looking at the wave count from here yeah so this is definitely i'm very happy with this being the w very happy with this being the end of x but y wave needs to be broken down further because uh, this is the wave that we're currently in so let's go in on the one hourly chart here so I've been looking at this and what I can actually see is I was previously saying this is going to be a WXY of a smaller degree, this Y wave. So I was saying this is a W, this is an X and this is a Y. And the reason I was saying that is because you can see that there's three waves down here. Yeah, but I've had a closer look now and actually if you plot some trend lines like this and like this you can actually see a diagonal pattern also known as a wedge now in my Elliott Wave tutorials I did talk about diagonals and wedges um, in this case this will be described as a leading diagonal because it's the um, it's the first wave in this Y wave down yeah, so it's a, a leading diagonal. Um, in my tutorial, I didn't differentiate actually the subwave count between a leading diagonal and an ending diagonal. In fact, a leading diagonal has a 53535 five, five pattern, uh, subwave count, whilst an ending diagonal would have a subwave count as 33333. Three, three, three. Either way, they're both impulsive waves, which means that after they go down, you see a correction before you see a continuation in the same direction. Yeah, this is the case with a leading diagonal. So here I can see the way we always use numbers to uh, um, label diagonal patterns because they're impulse waves. If it was corrective, we would use letters. Yeah, but they're always impulse waves. Um, so I would label it as one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I'm seeing this as a leading diagonal here. As you can see, wave 4 overlaps with wave 1 here, which is absolutely fine because it's a diagonal pattern. It's the only pattern which has an exception to the impulse wave rule, which is that wave 4 shouldn't overlap with wave 1. So diagonals can do that. All right, so if this is our leading diagonal, I'm calling this, uh, I'm expecting this to com come an ABC. So this is A, B I'm saying finish here, and now we're in C, which I think is going to finish around here. Okay, now let me just hide the wave there. So, so I'm saying this leading diagonal is wave A, B was a failed wave here, so, um, I believe B wave in itself was a WXY with this being WX and a Y failure here before it started coming down. And then this C leg, I've got it to be a one. In fact, so let's bring that here. Let's go on the 15 minute chart here. It's a lot clearer to see. So 
So I've got wave one coming to here. That's wave one, two, three, four, five to make wave one. And then we've got wave two being a triangle here, A, B, C, D, E. And then wave three, finishing around here. So we've got a wave one, two, three, four, triangle, five. So that's the end of wave three. Then we've seen wave four. And then what I expect with wave five is it to finish around here. And if we zoom out on the four hourly chart, I expect it to form a new low. Yeah, uh, sorry, compared to this low, I expect it to break this low, come down here. So that will actually be the end of this WXY pattern. Yeah, what I'm now expecting is it could in fact be a WXY XZ. So if I just label that now, let's take off this WXY pattern. I'm suggesting now we're going to see a W, X, Y. And then we're going to come up and retest this line to make another X wave. And then we're going to see a Z, which I look to be coming down to this 3000 level. I can, you can see here, price will be losing momentum. <clears throat> and you're going to see a lot of RSI divergence before price finds its bottom, makes a curved out flat bottom here before getting marked up. So this is my primary count now. I'm looking at a WXYXZ. The end target around 3000 remains the same. Um, of course, this can differ if my if my subwave count is wrong. When you zoom in um, quite closely, looking on 15 minute levels and one hourly levels, um, Elliott wave counts can break down a lot faster than the, than on the larger time frames. So, yes, it may follow this, or you may find price just coming up to this uh, line straight away before coming down further. So we have to allow price to potentially come up to this around 8,000 level before coming down further. However, I do think it's going to come down to here first, then retest this line before coming down to, to make its final low around that 3000 level. Certainly the 4300 is where the 78.6 Fib is. So you could even argue that there will be a WXY and this will be the final bottom. So we're getting very, very close now, to be honest. Um, there's a few different ways of looking at it. We have to, we're basically trying to anticipate what the uh, banks are going to be doing. So we have to look at a lot of indicators. We have to look at volume. It's also quite important to look at what other correlating charts are doing. So if we have a quick look at um, a few other altcoins. So we've got, for example, Verge is one that has actually already started to pop a little bit. Uh, Verge was one of the first altcoins that popped um, when Bitcoin was popping last time. So it always seems to make an initial move before the other old coins, and it's already done something here. Um, Digibyte still quite low, but what I'm saying is these old coins look like they're basing. As Bitcoin falls further, I don't expect the, bit, the old coins to fall much further. They may come down a little bit further, but not much at all. Let's look at Tron. Tron also made it just like Verge did, popped a little bit. Um, Ripple also looking a bit like Digibyte in the sense that it's still at low levels. And then Ethereum. Um, so with Ethereum, it's kind of in between the 61.8 and 78.6 retracement, meaning that it could come down to test this level, certainly. So a bit more scope for a decline here with Ethereum. But yeah, that's just looking at a few of the other coins, the altcoins, because obviously I know a lot of you out there you're not just trading Bitcoin, you're looking to you know, maximize your profits by looking at the altcoins, which seems to move up. They move a lot more aggressively. Um, <clears throat> so I'll try and do some analysis on a few altcoins at some point, but um, 
for the time being, I'm looking at Bitcoin. That is the benchmark of all the cryptocurrencies. It's the most important chart from a cryptocurrency point of view. Um, so yeah, this is what I can expect um, over the next few days, weeks. So I'm expecting initially to test this 4,300 level, which is the 78.6 retracement of the, the major move up. And then it could in fact make it, rather than just a WXY, it may make a WXYXZ further, further coming down to this 3000 level here. Um, so yeah, this wedge pattern kind of changed my subwave count a little bit. It looks like a wedge to me. Um, so it does further help explain what we're seeing at the moment. Um, because it's been a little bit choppy, a little bit difficult to interpret. Um, as I say, I do expect the next price movement to be coming down to here. Potentially, it could come up to 8,000 before it comes down further. But I would not be surprised with this being a weak market for it to come straight down from here before, rather than making a, a new high above 7,500, it may just come down to test this 4,300 level first. All right, guys, so that's just something to, to keep an eye out for. I hope it's been useful. Let's see how Bitcoin plays out, and I'll be making more updates as time goes on. Um, so as always, hope you've enjoyed the content. Please, if you're enjoying uh, what you've seen, please like, subscribe, share. All right, guys, take care.